Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade 5 in module 6 we are working on lesson number 19 and that means that we are plotting data on line graphs and we are analyzing trends. Now the homework for tonight includes two problems. I'm going to do most of problem number 2. Problem number 2, we're not going to be plotting any of the data but we are going to be analyzing the data. So let's take a look at problem number 2 and I'll walk you through parts A, B, and C of number 2. So number two says the line graph below tracks Santino's time at the beginning and end of each part of a triathlon. Use the information in the graph to answer the questions that follow. So let's take a look. Before we even look at the questions, let's take a look at the graph. So here is Santino's triathlon. And let's see, I always look at the x-axis first. Well, the x-axis shows the time. Okay, and I see, oh, here's 1 o'clock, it looks like. And there's 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock. And, you know, the other thing I want to try to figure out is how big are these sections? So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six sections for each hour. Oh, so I think this must mean that this is in 10-minute sections, right? This would be 1 o'clock, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 2 o'clock. 210, 220, 230, 240, 250, 3 o'clock. Sure enough. Okay, so this is great because now I know exactly how time is moving and how it's graphed on this part, on the x-axis. Now let's take a look at our y-axis. Our y-axis is right along here, and let's see, it says that this is the distance from the finish line in kilometers. Oh, and I see that the numbers go up. It looks like 10, 20, 30, so I think that means that each of these blocks must be 5 kilometers. That would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And it's distance from the finish lines. Hmm, interesting. So let's see, it's a triathlon. So let's, let's take a look at our questions and see what we need to know. Number one, let's see, one or two A, how long does it take Santino to finish the triathlon? Okay, well, let's see. So where's our first bit of data as we move across this time? Our first data is right here, right? This is where it looks like the race starts at one o'clock, and then it takes Santino, let's see, all this time gets to the finish line, right? That The finish line must be here because this is the point at which he's zero kilometers from the, from the finish line, would be zero. So it looks like it takes him from this point all the way to this point in our time on our x-axis for him to finish. How long is that? Well, that's an hour, hour 10, hour 20, hour 30, hour 40, hour 50. I would say it takes him an hour and 50 minutes. It didn't take him two hours because two hours would be here. He got to the finish line 10 minutes before that. So I would say that we know that this took him one hour and 50 minutes. We could write that a bunch of different ways, but that's how I'm going to write my hour and 50 minutes. Let's take a look at problem number B, 2B. To complete the triathlon, Santino first swims across a lake, then bikes through the city, and finishes by running around the lake. According to the graph, what was the distance of the running portion of the race? So let's see, it's a triathlon, that suggests it's three. So it's first it's swimming, then biking, and then running, and we're supposed to figure out what was the running portion. Well, let's see. So do I see the three uh, activities up here? They're not really labeled, but you know what? I'm noticing something, which is they said he did swimming first. So I wonder if that's the swimming portion. And then I wonder if he must pause for a second. And then, oh, and then there's the biking portion. He gets much closer to the finish line much more quickly. And then there must be some kind of a break. And then the last part is running. So that does actually fit, right? There are three times when he's making progress toward the finish line. This part this part, and this part. And they told us this this top part was swimming, then biking, then running, and they're interested in the running portion. So if we think this is the running portion, let's see. When he started the running portion, how far was he away from the finish line? Oh, I can tell, actually, right? He was five kilometers from the finish line when he started running, and he was zero kilometers from the finish line when he finished. So I think that must mean that the running portion was... We could do it as subtraction, right? Five when he started, zero when he finished, or five kilometers um, spent running. I think we can tell that from our graph, especially because they were really helpful in telling us which parts came first. Swimming first, then biking, and then running. Let's take a look finally at 2C. During the race, Santino pauses to put on his biking shoes and helmet, and then later to change into his running shoes. At what times did this most likely occur? Wow, they want us to do that without video, huh? Well, you know, I'm no remembering that we thought this was the swimming part, and then we noticed that there was some time when he wasn't making any progress. I bet that's the changing time right there. And then he did some biking. And then again, there's a little bit of time there where he doesn't seem to be making any progress toward the finish line. And then he does the running. So I bet those are the two points at which he was doing um, his changing. 
So let's see, at what times did this most likely occur? Well, let's see, this one happened, hmm, right here. Let's see, so this was 1 o'clock, and we said these were 10-minute segments. So this is 1, this is 1, 10, and then it looks like it's sort of halfway after. So I think, would that be 1, 1, 1, 10, 1, 15? It's halfway between 1, 10 and 1, 20. I think that would be 1, 15. So I would say at 1, 15 and, well, we've got to figure out the other one, uh, let's see, this break right here, let's see, what time was that? Well, let's see, that was after 2 o'clock, it was after 2.10, it looks like it was halfway between 2.10 and 2, 2.20, so that would be 2.15. So I'm going to say at 1.15 and 2.15, he might have changed. Cool. Awesome. Well, I think we've done a lot with this, um, this information to figure out things about Santino's triathlon. Um, I think that you'll be able to figure, use this information to figure out parts D and E as well, as well as to do problem number one. So thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.